E-R, F like Frank, O-O-D like dog, dot com, enterfood.com. A big thank you to all of our listeners already taking the products that Enter Health offers. We truly appreciate it. We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Hawk coming to you. It's Friday night. It's 726, 2013. You know, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we've got a lot of burdens out here. And I'll tell you something. Isn't it just wonderful when you have a Joker Chet who just comes on and puts a slap in the face of every Vietnamese uh, war veteran, every Vietnam War veteran, puts a slap in the face of the South Vietnamese who were brought over here as well, who fought, uh, you know, against Ho Chi Minh. But I just wanted to let you know a little bit something about this, that, you know, Vietnamese President uh, Chuang Tan Sang is uh, in the United States, and uh, and basically you have him visiting with, you know, Uncle Obama, or shall we say Joker Tut, uh, two communists of the same persuasion, and basically pirates, nonetheless. That is the whole idea of this. And Obama observes, he says, President Trung Tan Sang brought Obama a copy of the letter sent to President Harry Truman from Ho Chi Minh, in which the communist dictator spoke, hopefully, of cooperation with the United States. Well, here's why. Here's why he was hopeful. Because in 1947, Ho Chi Minh was dying of an acute appendicitis attack uh, in the jungle while he was in the jungle uh, basically uh, fighting against the French. May have been in the highlands, but ne nevertheless, in the field. And at that point in time, the French were uh, pretty much well uh, taking it to uh, the Vietnamese from the north and those people, the communists, and all of that. So at that time, it was French Indochine. But lo and behold, as he's dying, which would have ended his career as a dictator of the future, well, isn't it interesting that um, you, in the United States, the uh, an OSS, Office of Strategic Services, DEER team, D-E-E-R, DEER team, an OSS deer team parachuted in behind the lines and hooked up with in the into the village where Ho Chi Minh was at, and they gave him an emergency appendectomy and saved his life. Now, I don't know if Truman authorized that or if it was just the OSS, the forerunner of the CIA. But that took place, from what I understand, right in the beginning of, like, uh, 47. It must have been before the uh, NSA was created and the uh, CIA was created. But it was OSS. And so basically what you've got then is uh, this dictator preserve. Well, of course, he's going to like Thomas Jefferson because he wants to overthrow the French. But... He did not establish, Ho Chi Minh did not establish a republic or even a democracy. Ho Chi Minh established a tyrannical communist dictatorship in which he slaughtered his opponents and butchered the peasant farmers who resisted his taxation and has no idea about what the real Jefferson was about who was about the people. And Obama, the Joker Chad, has no idea about what Jefferson was about or any of that because everything that you do, Joker Chad, everything that you do basically is this. And this is out of the Declaration of Independence, which you obviously, although you allegedly were a constitutional scholar, you have no clue 
about the Declaration of Independence. Because here's what it is, and here's what your problem should be with it, but you don't consider it to be a problem because you are the dictator. But when a long train of abuses, uh, could we say that this is what you're calling the phony scandals, where you let your intelligence community, and you probably, you probably, and I don't know if you did or not, that's speculation or an opinion, you probably gave the order to your intelligence world to go and take out your ambassador who is starting to drag his feet about hiring and putting al-Qaeda under the payroll of the United States government so they could be the freedom fighters in the Syrian rebel army when in fact they were basically al-Qaeda affiliates from Libya who you also utilized to overthrow Gaddafi. And Gaddafi was in there uh, initially by MI6. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, this thing keeps going on and on, ladies and gentlemen. But here's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Joker, Chet. So, you, this phony scandal of Benghazi, where, you know, the uh, ambassador of the United States is killed and sodomized at the same time by al-Qaeda operatives in the payroll of the United States government, and as a hit, I allege, perpetrated by the intelligence community and perhaps signed up by you. Certainly the cover-up has been directed by your administration. Now, what are the other fake scandals you utilized or your administration did? Of course, you know, you had a whole lot more meetings with the IRS commissioner than anybody ever has seen. And you use the IRS against political opponents. Chicago style. Chicago style politics, huh? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. It's unconstitutional. It's against the law. And it should be a chargeable offense which somebody could then impeach if you gave the orders and the directives to do so. And if you did not, then who did? And if somebody did, why doesn't the FBI, Herr Mueller, Herr Mueller, and what's the new tall guy? The new tall guy is supposed to be the good guy, the heir apparent. If you guys really were obeying the law, or were law enforcement officers, which you are not, you are political hack intelligent secret police, with the exception of the good FBI that do excellent work at the level with bank robberies, uh, fraud, and other things involved. And it used to be some of the counterintelligence people were pretty good. But now all that you guys are doing is making sure that State Department people put underwear bombers on the plane at Sheephole Airport without a visa, without a passport, and you get them onto the plane, and then you have your marshals watch him, your air marshals watch him, and uh, videotape, and then he lights his underpants on fire, and that's your big terrorist plot so you can get your budget, your raison d'etre, your reason to exist today, huh? Well, you see, you should be investigating the high crimes against the United States, by high-level politicians. That's what you should be doing. Here, Mueller, why don't you ask the Internal Revenue Service, which is a basically a corporation that stems out of, it's a corporation that stems out of the Inland Revenue or Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory, which the laws apply only to those territories, not to the United States. And why don't you then investigate the fact that the IRS has never even talked to any of the Tea Party people to gather any evidence what, about the abuses 
of Larry Junker, Ted says a big scandal. That's a lie. He's lying. You guys are lying. You guys are not true law enforcement. You are nothing but tares. You are nothing but tares in the wheat. And you are evil because you go along and you play along and you continue along. There was a time I thought maybe you had reformed your issues since you had a former leader who conspired, at least in the cover-up, after the fact, of killing a President Kennedy, along with the CIA, the EIEIO, the DIA, the F, you know, the, you know, all of the EIEIOs, the Pentagon, you killed Kennedy at the behest of bankers, at the behest of Luciferian, Illuminati, scumbag bankers who you really work for. So when you think you're going to church and you think you're doing good and you think you're protecting America and you think you're enforcing the law and you've got a little hut, 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 and you've got a quick step and by golly, you shoot pretty good at Hogan's Alley and all those kind of things. Just realize that you are the scum that you are and you're not enforcing the law. What you're doing is, is operating as a secret police for dictators that under, and you cannot, let me tell you something, you cannot disagree because it is 100% true. Training with the Enemy Act of 1917 as amended 1933, otherwise known as, or you guys would say, AKA, the Emergency Powers Act. It's unconstitutional. It created a dictatorship which only the dictator can rescind. And since then, we have operated in a color of law system under admiralty law and color of law. And as the dictatorship of the executive branch, and you guys have presided over it as secret police. And then basically, you're all fools and you're all liars and you're traitors to your own nation. And when you go to church this Sunday, if you go to church, when you go to temple, wherever it is you go, and you think you're praying to the Lord and all of that, you're going to see the bleeping red light in the back of your mind. You're going to see it in your mind's eye. Every time you look at your paycheck, every time you get out and you try to enjoy yourself on the golf course, every time you go to Hogan's Alley, that perpetrator, that guy that you're shooting at the target down there, is going to look back to you and he's going to talk to you. He's going to whisper in your ear and he say, you know, you really are a tear. You are not who you purport to be. However, there is an opportunity to repent of your sins and to get yourself gainful employment somewhere else where you do not have to become the secret police for a dictatorship that has been going on since 1933. I lived my entire life under a dictator. We had a semblance of freedom. We had a semblance of freedom. But essentially, we had no liberty. We had no freedom. You proved that to us with COINTELPRO, didn't you, FBI? Which is still ongoing. COINTELPRO, it's still basically ongoing. Why not? You know, you guys are just not who you think you are. So the Joker Tech says that, oh, boy, old uh, Ho Chi Minh was really good. He liked Jefferson and the founding fathers and all this, that, and the other. Well, <laughs> that may be true, but Ho Chi Minh was somebody who was a dictator and a communist dictator who was killing his own people and destroying and butchering peasant farmers and all kind of people that were going against them because they did not want this communist way of government. And, oh, yeah, we overthrew the French, then the United States, then the United States as a proxy for the London, city of London, and the London banks, which own our money center banks, Oh, yes, the United States took over with the CIA 
took over the opium trade from the French, which was the largest business, one of the largest businesses in the world. They cornered the opium trade from the French and took it over when the defeated Dian Phu took place and when ZM was killed in 63 as well, prior to President Kennedy. And then at that point in time, your military industrial complex then took over, your intelligence world took over, your Luciferian scum took over. And yes, you cornered the opium market. You also got bauxite, which makes aluminum out of bauxite, for those who don't remember. Manganese, iron. Other, uh, you could, uh, could find some rare earths there. Rubber trees, which back then, synthetic rubber wasn't as big. You see, it was just starting. And they needed rubber to make tires in those days and other gaskets and what have you. And then, of course, uh, oil and natural gas. <laughs> which are still not quite developed, but will be. And so now the president of Vietnam is coming to try to get the big old bad United States to help them against Red China. Red China who would like to just eat them alive. But in the meantime, the Joker Tut basically slapped every American veteran and slapped everybody and spit on the grave of, you know, a whole lot of men and women who are up there on that wall. Joker Chuck, do you not know that there is a wall in Washington, D.C.? You want to go somewhere, people, if you've never been to the wall, the Vietnam War Memorial, Veterans War Memorial, you want to go there, I, I recommend you stop off at the last outpost and you talk to some of those people first. And then you go to the wall, and if you're of an age where you remember somebody that lost their life in that conflict, or if you were there and your buddies were there and they lost their lives, but if you've never been to the wall, I recommend you go. It's the most solemn place I have ever been in my life. That the It just hangs over it. It's just incredible feeling there, the emotion there. So the Joker Tut. He didn't want to talk to anybody, I guess, who's a veteran. And he wants to slap you in the face if you're a Vietnam War veteran. And believe me, he's already going to do it with you because he thinks you were all mean to the to the Muslims when you're over in Belize or, uh, or in Afghanistan. Matter of fact, I'd like to know who leaked. I'd like to know who leaked. I'd like to know who leaked. You hear that enough there? Does that get your attention, you screwballs who listen to this, who are on the cheating side of life, who are on the evil side of NSA, FBI, DIA, CIA, EIEIO surveillance? I can't even turn my computer off anymore. I can't even pull the push the button and turn it off. I have to unplug it from the wall. And then it still delays a minute or two. And then when I send emails to somebody, they get six different copies of them. Or when I'm talking to somebody on the phone and their computer is being blocked by you or something, and we discuss on the phone and I say, I'm going to make you famous on air, and then all of a sudden their computer starts to work. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm living this surveillance. Friends of this show are living this surveillance. Steve Quayle had his site messed with again the other day. You want to know some other things. And I'm coming back around the horn. You know, the old hawk always will come back around to the thread. Because basically what I'm talking about is a tyrant here. And these are all things that are his phony scandals so much. This NSA scandal that the scumbags in Congress in the House voted to keep you under 24-hour surveillance. And if any of your Congress people did that, you ought to look it up to see if they did. 
you should call their home office in your local community, wherever that's at, in the district, and then call the office in D.C., send them a postcard, big black capital letters. Don't send letters because they can always say you put something in them. Send a postcard, which then uses big black capital letters that everybody gets to read it, and then the post office takes a picture of the front and the back of it. So make sure you put things on the front and on the back a little bit or put a drawing or whatever, or you can have it printed, whatever you want to do, make it on your computer. But you send it to them, and you say, you basically are a scum for having voted to keep the American people under 24-hour surveillance by the necrophiliacs in the Shiite arsehole brigade at the NSA. This is totalitarian stuff. And this is what we're getting back to on the line. The Joker Chat, Ho Chi Minh, all of these people, Hitler, Stalin, Mao, all the favorite people of the Joker Chat. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, and Joker Chat is a usurper, he still is as far as the known facts. He still is a citizen of Indonesia of the name of Barry Sotero with a fake social security number, allegedly, that his grandmother allegedly, who worked for the Social Security Administration, and that social security number should be of a dead white man in the state of Connecticut. And when you get a social security number, it should be from a state you've lived in, which said state the Joker Tut has never lived in. And that he is a Muslim, according to the documentation that exists, where he was adopted by Lolo Sotero, and consequently, he is ineligible and has usurped the office of the President of the United States. So when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them, meaning us, meaning the American people, meaning us of the United States, to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Let me repeat it again. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object, events, and design? Does the National Defense Authorization Act, which allows the president to send people to concentration camps in the United States for indefinite periods of, of, uh, of servitude, is that something that might evince a design to reduce an American person into absolute despotism? to bring them in under that, is 24-hour surveillance of your computer, of your voice uh, over the Internet uh, uh, phone, your Skype, of your cell phone, of your smartphone, of all of your search engines, of your financial records, of your school records, of your military records, of your... medical records, which now those who are going to be the hammer against you to force you to pay up. And incidentally, it's supposed to be, I think, approximately $20,000 a year for a minimum plan for a family. 20000 a year for insurance for a minimum plan for a family. And that's if you're going to have uh, an ability to do so, because you probably won't have a full-time job anymore, if any job at all. So that's great for the middle class, isn't it there, Joker Tut? But when a long train of abuse said use your patience, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government, 
and to provide new guards for their future security. The fact of the matter is Declaration of Independence is the founding document of this government and is the law of the land. It's terrible, ladies and gentlemen. Ho Chi Minh is a dictator. The Joker Tut is a dictator. Birds of a feather. Birds of a feather. Want to stick together. Now, another thing. And this one is also passionate. The stinking North Korean oon scum are going to put on display the USS Pueblo, an intelligence ship that was captured in a sneak attack by the North Koreans back in the 60s. Captain Buker and his crew and some people died, and then everybody else was taken and tortured and beat, beat badly every day almost, and then paraded around for propaganda purposes and all kind of stuff and psychological torture and mind mind control stuff and all kind of stuff worked on them. And the fact of the matter is this, and I'm going to go back to the deer team as well and tell you some history. Fact is, is that the traitors, the commies at the top of the United States military, the intelligence community, and the executive branch who work for the bankers who work for the Illuminati, Luciferian, scumbag bankers. They wanted to blunt the United States, you see, and cause the war to go keep going on with the Soviets, with the Chinese, with the North Koreans as a proxy, because it's good for business. It also stirs up all of the Luciferian juices, Ordo, Abkeo. And then it also kills young men, young women who go to war, which is very beneficial for their population control so they can control you. But what many, many people do not know is that a very brave crew of another ship called the USSS Maddox, who also was a ship that was left to its own devices. Everybody says, oh, it was a false flag to create the Vietnam War. No, the Maddox pulled stay behinds on up into the river estuaries up into China, and when they came out, the Red Chinese saw them, and they called on the North Vietnamese to attack them, and they started shelling and firing with gunboats on the Maddox. The Maddox fought back, but you see, the stinking, for hours, but the stinking LBJ wanted to start that war and would not allow. LBJ, ladies and gentlemen, actually ordered a Marine Corps aviator that if he went to the assistance of the Maddox in the Gulf of Tonkin, he ordered that Marine Corps aviator to stand down or he would personally do him. The President of the United States was on the line. And I know the people who were on the Maddox who heard it on the radio. The Maddox would have saved Booker his crew, but they were not allowed to. We'll be back in a minute. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, Enerhealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10- to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. 
Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Survive to Thrive. It's Hawk. It's Friday night. It's 7 26, 2013. The Red Chinese will tell you it's the year of the snake. Well, let me tell you something. The Lord Jesus gave you power and dominion over serpents and scorpions. So if you ever see a serpent or a scorpion, you know what to do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the USS Pueblo and many of you are younger don't even know what it is or anything about it. This was a long ongoing over many, many months, time, years, I think, where they were captives Lloyd Booker and his crew were captives of the North Koreans. And now they're going to parade this boat out there about how they so big and brave. Why in the heck don't we light up the North Koreans right now and tell the Chinese to go fish and tell the Chinese dump all the treasuries because we are no longer going to allow you to import any goods into the United States unless you pay a 40% tariff to bring your things up so we can raise our wages back to where they were when we gave you the dadgum factories in the first place. If you want a frog, he comes according, and he wants to come a court, then by golly, then let's get something out there and show froggy what he's going to get. Before this joker Tut in league and in allegiance with the Luciferian, commie, or tyrannical scum in Russia, in China. And, and don't get me wrong, the Russians are more capitalistic, more capitalistic and free enterprise than the United States is. We have become the controlled economy. We have become the economy where the Federal Reserve prints $85 billion a month or more. So, ladies and gentlemen, the brave crew of the Maddox kept querying orders from the White House and command, sink pad, kept querying the orders, wanting to go in and help the Pueblo and help the Bennett, which the Maddox could have gone in and used five-inch guns. They could have tore up the crap out of some of those uh, uh, red Chinese uh gunboats and could have rescued Booker or at least delayed the fight until other units or aircraft could have gotten there. But they were not allowed under penalty of court martial were not allowed to go and rescue or save the American vessel there. Much the same. I, I, I have to uh, bring this up as well. Much the same as the USS Liberty that was continually and continually attacked by Israeli forces off the coast, in the, you know, there. And even with guys in the water was being strafed by uh, Israeli planes. Now that was wrong, but that was also allowed, and that was part of the Illuminati's allowing of these things to take place. I mean, if Obama really wanted to do something, why doesn't he make a, a new bill or have, you know, the Republicans create a new bill where we could just bring over uh, and have free immigration of all the Vietnamese people and then let them to come in because they would then work for what they're working for in Vietnam, which is 50 cents an hour. It was about a buck or two bucks a day 
but now they're probably up to about 50 cents per hour. So consequently, they work 10 hours, they make uh, five bucks, you know? <laughs> So they make five bucks a day now, you know, or six if they work 12, etc. Why don't you just bring them all over? We can put all of those Vietnamese people in California as well, and we can make them all Democrats and issue a Democrat card, Obama, right off the bat. Why don't you do that, too? Why don't you just take all of the American jobs and... Technical difficulties. Stand by. Technical difficulties. Stand by. Finally, is still trying to give you a ticket every time you turn around and trying to throw your teenage son or daughter into jail so he can pinch their bottom, you know, while he arrests them. Or if they have, you know, don't comply with his wishes, which is doing anything he wants you to do within 30 seconds, then tasing them and killing them to death with the taser after he just keeps pulling the trigger on them. You see, that's America. We have no liberty. We have no freedom. The only freedom and liberty we have is what we have inside our own minds, in our spirit, in our soul, and the amount of distance we can control around each of us, each of our bodies, the amount of distance we control, that's the only area where we have any freedom. Your government is totally arrayed against you. You have a dictator in office. You have a, you have a Congress that is bought and paid for, where you see General Alexander allegedly goes up to give briefings. Well, I tell you, I allege... And it's my opinion, that's a better way to put it, it's my opinion. Basically what he did was showed the blackmail to each of the people who was not going to vote his way or the NSA way, which is not the American way. It's more like the Nazi, you know, uh, uh, the Nazi way or the, uh, uh, what's that star, Boots, out there, Boots, or what's another star out there, you know, the... Uh, um, <laughs> the, where the greys come from or, or Servo or any of the planets or any of the people Alexander you've cut deals with and all you guys are doing you and the CIA you're running the Phoenix program if you could ever find a book to read about the Phoenix program and this is back to Vietnam again but if you ever find a book called The Phoenix Program by Douglas Valentine, and uh, I'll tell you something, it is a rare book, but if you ever found it, I suggest you get in and read it and understand what's going on with it. Uh, Avon Books, copyright 1990 by Douglas Valentine. So all you guys are doing is working the... Phoenix program is fixing to go to work inside the United States. And there's going to be drones killing you. You're going to have people. You're going to have your throat slitters. Only now, you're hiring the Russians to be the throat slitters. And meanwhile, while you got the Russians are hired to be the throat slitters, you still run the dope trade, don't you, for the Committee of 300. And you got old Poppy Bush grinning like an old Lucy that he probably is with predilections for pedophilia, according to um, people like Bryce Taylor and others, who like to, and that he likes to play the most dangerous game, you know, which is hunting human beings, little naked boys or girls, in woods in deep southern Missouri in the old days. So it just didn't quite go the way you thought. But then maybe it did go the way that CIA officer Ralph Johnson thought when he was in his safari jacket, little baseball cap, and he decided to come down on the mountains in uh, 59 in Wong uh, uh, Sai Laos. You see what I'm saying? 
And you got McNamara, you got all these guys. You got Nelson Bickham Jr., you got Harry Buzz Johnson, you got Colby, Akampora. <laughs> there was a trip. You got Black Luigi. You got Pappy Greaves. You got Sing Loud, Secord, Adderholt. You got all these guys, and they did what? They took over your, they took over the dope trade, didn't they? For the, so Poppy Bush could run it as an operations manager for the committee of 300. 300 committee, which is what? It basically is the directorships or positions of stockholdership of the British East Indies Stock Company, whose main businesses always were opium and other drugs on the planet, and blackbirds uh, financing and slavery, along with the banks and one with it. You know, Putin is catching sturgeon, or large pike, out of the uh, ocean there in Siberia, or the lake in Siberia, standing in freezing water in camouflage. And then you got the same time on the front of Drudge, Obama pointing upward. Yeah, he's pointing upward because he said, you know, Lucifer is now rising up because he is going to be the true God. That's why he points upward, because it sure is not about what the Greeks would call Adonai. It's sure not about Lord Jesus or our Father in Heaven. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's just an, an angry thing to understand it. When you fully understand it, you fully see it all, and you see how far it's gone, then the only thing I can suggest to you is to your sins, ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart and to be your Savior and have him direct your path and ask him to direct your path and be the most service to him. Because it's not about your will, it's about his will. Our Father in Heaven is about his will, you see. It's about doing for the Lord what he needs done. Because if we do not stand, there will be nothing left. And you have to go against the evil. If you want to hide, you want to go do that, then go do it, but don't talk to me about it. Because I work for Lord Jesus. And that's all there is to it. Am I a sinner? Absolutely. But let me just tell you a little hint. Lord Jesus, don't pick the old little sissy, milk toasty, little guy who never did this, never did that doesn't have the cojones to confront the evil or even the big mouth to even get on and say anything about it or let alone to keep his mouth shut and be able to hit hard and knock people out or knock people down or to take them out and to take evil out and to confront it with its own devices and to squash the serpents and the scorpions under feet. You see, this is not the nicey nice deal. This is the end times, people. This is the times where if the time are not shortened for the elect, no flesh should be saved. Matthew 24. This is the time, like I said, Luke 21. This is the time, is it not? Where? Ye shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And ye shall be aided of all men for my name's sake. Well, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I'm proud to be in the service of the Lord. And if you'd like to be, then I suggest you ask him to use you and to direct your path. Each one of us, you know, here, can be a leader in our own area of influence. And you can expand the area that you are able to control and to where you're able, excuse me, able to expand the area where liberty, love of the Lord, truth, dignity, really do reign and we really do 
have and exist. Keep working and figuring out how you can expand that area or span of control. Now, isn't it interesting that all the articles that come out that's just quite interesting, you know, here. And, oh, I wanted to tell you, last night I was talking about the Red Chinese. Before I forget, uh, Brother Quail was taking some photographs, I believe, up in uh, Yellowstone yesterday. And he uh, came in, uh, I think he was in a helicopter and took some photographs. But he came in to the airport and talked to somebody there or somebody, you know, in some place there. And he saw an aircraft. And he said, well, I wonder whose aircraft that was. It was a Gulf Stream 5, a, a G5. Turns out, now listen to this. Are you listening carefully? carefully? Listen carefully. Turns out it was a red Chinese energy company. Oh, yes, they may still be in the Yellowstone area. If you're there, look for them. Say hi and say, hey, hey, red Chinese, no ticky, no laundry. Why don't you go back to Shanghai do not try to use our Yellowstone for a geothermal power plant since you probably think, and you probably have the documents that says maybe, just maybe, you actually own that Yellowstone Park because it probably was given to you in exchange for some purchasing of the debt, just like the stealth technology of the United States Air Force was given. And now today, ladies and gentlemen, the Air Force tells us, well, we've got a shortage of over 200 fighter pilots right now, and then we think we're going to have a shortage of like thousands within a couple years. Well, maybe that's because you told the fighter pilots that they were no longer needed and that you were going to be sitting in a trailer at Creech and flying drones at Creech or what is it, Belvoir, or one of those ports in uh, Virginia where you fly them out of there, or any of the little bases now, like that little town in Kansas of, you know, like 4,000 people where they have a drone base, you know? Or like that little drone base somewhere near Lebanon, Ohio, I talked about last night where they've been, got that little airstrip that's tucked in neatly into the trees up there in Lebanon, Ohio, in that area. Y'all are up there. You got to go see it. Maybe you can, maybe you can put up a blimp or a or a balloon or a, a giant King Kong or a giant Godzilla balloon. Maybe you can do that to protect yourself from the drones that are flying out of that little base there, which they're going to come and look for you in Ohio, under the direction of Little Dicky Jones, probably over in Butter County. Although this one happens to be. Lebanon area happens to be in Warren County, Ohio. And old little Dickie Jones is nonplussed, and he just can't understand it. But I'm going to tell you what, when you're a tear, little Dickie, you just do not have the ability to discern. But you are evil. Your people should throw you out of office and vote you out. You've already got a revival happening in your county, Butler County, Warren County, Butler County, Hamilton County, Miami County, where Dade, Dayton is, and all the right paddy. And up there in Springfield, where the National Guard base there, where the Danish uh, the Danish crawlers are flying their jets, and that's part of a foreign soil, well, then that's also a drone base. Oh, yes. They're getting ready to come for you. And they're putting these blimps up over D.C. Well, these blimps are j -Lens lens so they can see and they say it's to protect just like in World War II when they put blimps up to protect against aircraft these are to protect against cruise missiles well the NSA the NASIC did the alert of ballistic and cruise missiles why because you got the P the Ryans are not on the east coast or on the west coast hardly anymore doing anything you mothball them you don't have out there, so you can't spot anybody coming in. Why? Because you want your foreign people to come in. You want your infiltrators, your little rubber ducky boat boys to come in, probably to bring in those tennis balls, the nuclear weapon that's the size of 
the Pakistanis are able to make, and they proliferated them to, as far as the information goes, to North Korea, Iran, possibly Syria, possibly uh, China. You bet China's got them. Chinese got the plan, they're making their own, you know. So now that's going on. But at the same time, you're trying to figure out how to make your army, your air force, your navy, your coast guard more queer. I guess you need to have a transgender toilet there too. So they can go, half can go on one side, half can go on the other side, you know. And maybe put glory holes in both places. I, that's terrible, but I'm just telling you, it is so sickening. It's evil, and the stench is rising to heaven, Joker Tut and your crew. You're destroying the United States. You're destroying it. And people like Mueller and this new tall boy over there, I forget his name, you're allowing it to happen because you're secret police for an evil dictator. All of you. And it wouldn't have, you know that right in the midst of us all, MIT, Mickey Mouse and Mickey Mouse intelligence team, MIT, neuroscientists plant false memories in the brain. So now they've discovered where your memory traces, either false or real, can be found. And that's the real thing. It pinpoints where the brain stores memory. They're called engrams. Both false and authentic, they say. The phenomenon of the false memory has been well documented in many court cases, etc. But now they found out that it exists, or though these traces of memory are stored in the mouse hippocampus, in the brain. But basically, what they're telling you this and bringing it out is because the ultra-black evil science crowd has been implanting people for years implanting them, creating mind control subjects, putting false memories into their brain, into their minds for years. So now that's something you have to look forward to when you get arrested or, or taken over. They can now give you a memory of how wonderful and beautiful it is in the concentration camp. And you think you're in the concentration camp when you first get there, but when you get the memory of it and then you know that you went through and that it's the last vestige of place you can be because the whole United States, except for your camp and a few other areas, was destroyed. Little do they know that that's not true, but they could do that. They could also say that you are uh, that you are a traitor, and then they could put the false memory in there. However, let me tell you something. If you pay attention to the Lord Jesus, then I'm going to tell you what. You're going to know these things. You're going to come out the other end. But the fact of the matter is, you've got to know him. You can't just go to church and do Salabim, haba haba haba, and throw in the ten bucks and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't work that way. You see, if you can get to know Lord Jesus himself and ask him to come into your heart, ask him to reveal himself to you and come into your heart, and you'll be changed. We can have the most beautiful world you ever see. We can have free energy. There are several levels of it. It's basically the zero point energy, which is free. Then there is, at a lower cost, a very low cost, you can do, they even have other technologies of cold fusion. And there's a couple of different ways of doing that, all of which E DARPA, E energy DARPA, has suppressed the real ways. But even in that technology, for about $200,000, $250,000, you can put a fusion reactor in to an area and run the entire town for about 250000 bucks and never have to worry about it ever again. You can have free energy where nobody had to pay any energy charges. It was not built into any of the factors of anything to manufacture anything, none of it. Free energy. Maybe a one-time cost for the device. It would be beautiful. Light, heat, air conditioning, everything, free. You could have that. You could have it to where we just basically had it made and we could pursue and continue with 
improving ourselves from our relationship with the Lord to improving our mind and our IQs and our abilities and our education for improving our skills like uh, beautiful things like the arts and poetry and acting and, and drawing and painting and sculpting and all of these things that would be of a wonderful benefit and beautiful and to make this world beautiful. We can produce so much food you cannot believe it. It's not that hard to do. But you see, when you do it that way, then everybody is wealthy, and then you don't have 20, 30, 100 money groups owning everything on the planet and then putting everybody in a scarcity to where they've got nothing and then shrinking the scarcity and shrinking, 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 shrinking it until system is destroyed. You can decide tomorrow to change the entire game and to make it fair, more fair. It can still be a game. still going to be fun. still be a challenge. But where does it say that the U.S. government gets to make sure that the guys at the top never, ever lose? And in order to make sure they never, ever lose... They have to come and steal 20, 30, 40 trillion, 50 trillion from you to do it. Don't go into their Luciferian night without a fight. You go out tonight and go buy some more ammunition. Buy that food. You want to buy gold and silver? Call Steve Quayle, 406 586 You want to get some good food and get a discount? Go to interfood.com, tell them off since. Mighty men and women of valor, I know that you're some of the only people protecting the United States against the incoming. Bang Dangle Rangers, wherever you may be, I know you're ready to do your dance. And to make you look cool, keep them dialed in, baby. Stay cool. Sit there with your Cohiba upon the little wrap. Just enjoy it. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you.